What's up everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, we're going to start a new section and we're going to be graphing exponential functions. So notice that I got three different ones here and I'm going to show you the process that I go through. May not necessarily be the same process your teacher goes through, but hopefully you can catch some similarities. So before going into this video, highly recommend you go back to unit one and review a couple of videos about transformations of functions because I'm going to be using transformations to graph these exponential functions. So getting the A value, the K value, D value, C value, then putting it through the formula X over K plus D, A Y plus C. Hopefully you're remembering what all of that is. If you don't, I'd recommend going back to unit one and just checking out a couple of videos for transformations, seeing a couple of examples. So in general, exponential functions, what's going to happen is you're going to have a parent function that looks like this, right? So some kind of base to the power of X. And that's actually the first step in graphing exponential functions is you want to figure out what the base is, what the parent function is. So notice here, number one, and this function negative three, one half to the power two X minus four plus four, what is the base? What's this B value? Well, in this case, it's one over two. Right? It's basically the number that has the exponent attached to it. So 1 over 2 to the power of x would be the parent function for this exponential function. Here, we're given this in function notation, but we're told that f of x, the parent function, is 2 to the power of x. So the parent function in this case is going to be 2 to the power of x. The b value is 2. And then in here, we got negative 3 minus 2 times 3 to the power of 1 half x plus 3. That's the base, the three here, right? What's attached to the exponent. So the parent function in this case would be three to the power of x. So that's one difference between exponential functions and the functions we dealt with before, like x squared, absolute value x, one over x, is that the parent function is gonna change depending on what the base is. So before the parent functions had standard tables like x squared, all of those functions that we dealt with in unit one, but with exponential functions, the parent table can change depending on what the base is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this parent function and then transform it. And the general transformation format is this right here. So once it's in this format, that's how you're going to get your transformation values, the A value, the K value, the D value, and then the C value. So let's start off by trying to graph number one, which I've written out here. Y equals negative three, one half to the power of two X minus four plus four. First step, as I mentioned before, you want to figure out what is the base you're dealing with? What is the parent function? Well, in this case, that's the base, one half. So the parent function is one half to the power of x. And then what you want to do is you want to make a table for this parent function. And you could pick however many points you want. Uh, for this one, let's maybe go from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. It's quite a lot of points. Uh, usually some teachers just want you to plot 3, but uh, I'm going to plot 5 in this case. Maybe I'll plot 3 in some of the other functions. So. 1 half to the power of negative 2 at an x value of 2, what do you get? Well, that would equal 4. If you plug that into your calculator, basically 1 over 2 to the power of negative 2, flip the fraction, 2 over 1 to the power of positive 2, which is like 2 to the power of positive 2, which is 4. Then 1 half to the negative 1 would give you uh, positive 2. 1 half to the 0 would give you 1. 1 half to the 1 would give you 1 half. Let's put a decimal actually, 0 0.5. And then 1 half to the power of 2 would be 1 over 4, which would be 0 0.25. All right, so this here represents your parent table for this specific exponential function with a base of 1 half. Okay, let's uh, take this and rewrite it under the general format. So we got y equals negative three, and then we have one half to the power of two x minus four plus four. 
right? And from here, you want to figure out what's the A value, K value, D value, C value. Now, is this format the exact same as this one? Well, it's fairly similar. We could tell what the A value is. We could tell what the C value is. But notice here how the K value is factored out. If you remember, that K value has to be by itself. That X variable has to be by itself as well. So here, we would have to actually factor out a 2 from 2x minus 4. So we would rewrite this exponent as 2 bracket x minus 2, like that. And now it's in that format. And now it's really easy to find our transformation value. So I'm going to write them out over here. So what's the a value? What's the k value? What's the d value? What is the c value? Well, the a value is negative 3. Right? So this is negative 3. k value is 2. The d value is positive 2. If you remember, you always change the sign for the d value. So if it was minus 2 here, it's positive 2 here. If it's x plus 2, then uh, the d value would be negative 2, right? Because it's x minus the d value. So x minus 2 means the d value is positive 2. And then the c value is 4. Okay, so now that we have our transformation values, we put them through the general transformation format. And if you remember, what is the general transformation formula? It's x over k plus d, and then a y plus c. Right, so all of these x values, we're going to transform through this formula. All of the y values, we're going to transform through that formula. So from here, you just want to plug in. So basically, the k value is 2, so all the x values, we're going to divide by 2. And then we're going to add 2. We're going to add that d value. And then all of the y values, we're going to multiply by negative 3, right? So there's going to be a negative 3 here for the a value. And then the c value is going to be 4. So that's the formula you're going to use for transforming these points for this specific function, right? So for example, taking uh, an x value negative 2, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, plus 2 gives us positive 1. This here, negative 1, negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 0.5, plus 2, that gives us 1.5. 0, 0 divided by 2 is 0, plus 2, that just gives us 2. Um, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 plus 2, that gives us 2.5. And then uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1 plus 2, that just gives us 3. And then you take these y values, put them through that formula. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 4 gives us negative 8. 2 times negative 3, negative 6, plus 4, that gives us negative um, 2. 1 times negative 3 plus 4, that gives us positive 1. Uh, 0 0.5 times negative 3 is negative 1.5 plus 4, that would give us positive 2.5. And then uh, negative 3 times 0 0.25, that gives us what? Negative 0 0.75. Negative 0 0.75 plus 4 would give us what? 3.25. And now, notice we have our table for this function here. So we're just going to be plotting those points. So I took that table, rewrote it here, and then rewrote the transformation values over here. And I'm going to take that table and plot it on that graph. Now, if you remember with the reciprocal function, 1 over x in unit 1, I always suggested that you draw out the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote as dotted lines first before plotting these points. And exponential functions, they always contain a horizontal asymptote. And it's always based on the c value. So you may want to make a note of that. The c value is always the horizontal asymptote. And it's pretty important for graphing and also for finding the range, which we have to do in this question. And I'm going to do it at the end after I graph the function. But this c value 
for exponential functions, always the horizontal asymptote. So that's actually the first thing you want to draw before even plotting these points, is you want to draw a horizontal asymptote, so a dotted line at whatever that c value is. That c value is positive 4 in this case. So y equals 4 is the horizontal asymptote in this case. If the c value is negative 5, then the horizontal asymptote would be down here, right? But it's positive 4, so y equals 4, that's the horizontal asymptote. So it's never going to touch that line. So now, plotting these points is a little bit easier because it's going to give you a perspective of how this graph is going to look. So 1 and negative 8, so 1 and negative 8, that's maybe like down here, let's say. This is maybe not going to be perhaps the most to scale, but I think you're going to understand how this actually looks. So x value 1.5, negative 2, that's maybe like, let's say, here. 2 and 1, that's like here. 2.5 and 2.5, that's maybe like over, uh, let's say, here. And then 3 and 3.25, 3 uh, 3 that's like over here. Right, so basically, the way this looks is something like that. Right? That's how that function looks like. Of course, you'd probably draw this on graph paper and make it a little bit more to scale. But the most important part, in my opinion, for exponential functions is getting that horizontal asymptote on the graph and then being able to just plot the points around that and then just see how it's going to look. It's always going to look maybe going down towards the horizontal asymptote or going up towards it, maybe coming down from it like that or it could be going up from it like that, right? In this case, it's this shape here, right? So that's how you graph it. So very similar as unit one, where we were just transforming functions. The only difference is that that parent function is changing depending on the function you're dealing with. So you're gonna have to make a new parent table, which is a little bit annoying every time you graph, unless all of the bases are the same in a question. So here again, the base was one half. Here the base is going to be two. Here the base is going to be three. So that initial parent table is always going to be different for these three graphs. But the transformations are going to be the same. You're still going to be putting it through that x over k plus d, a y plus c formula. C value is always going to be the horizontal asymptote. Everything else is the same. It's just uh, getting that um, parent function is going to be a little bit of extra work. So anyway, that is the graph of this. And then from here, easy to tell, what's the domain? What is the range? Now the domain for an exponential function, just an abstract exponential function, is always XER. Right, because this keeps going on forever to positive infinity. This keeps going on forever to negative infinity. So the x values can be anything. Unless you're dealing with a word problem, which we'll be doing in the next section, then there could be restrictions on the domain. But if you're just dealing with a regular exponential function, no sort of scenario attached to it, domain is always going to be xer. Now the range is always going to be yer, but it's going to depend on this horizontal asymptote, as I mentioned before. So notice that all of the y values have to be less than 4. Right? So that is the range. And it's not less than or equal to 4, it's just less than 4 because it never touches that horizontal asymptote, never touches that y value of 4. Right? So the range is always going to depend on the horizontal asymptote and then whether the graph is below it or above it. So if this graph instead maybe looked like this, then the range would be y is greater than 4, right? All of the y values are above the horizontal asymptote. But because they're below it, right, y has to be less than 4. So the range for an exponential function is always going to take this format. It's going to be y is either less than the c value or y is greater than the c value, depending on where the y values are relative to that horizontal asymptote. 
And that's it. That's the process for graphing. So you just basically figure out the parent function that you're dealing with and then uh, put it in this format, get your uh, transformation values, put it through the formula, graph it, and then getting the domain and range is pretty easy.